a woman hasn't raced in Formula One for 43 years. 18 women compete in six races across Europe. A new generation of women drivers are determined to take on the men at their own game. It's time for women's motorsport. We want the best to go into Formula One in future years. You will find out those who think they've got the commitment and those who truly have the commitment. Welcome to W Series. Oh, oh and she spun around. Oh, 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 huge crash there. Successful drivers don't have to be male. Jamie Chadwick, Mike Gavison, Marta Garcia, Emma Kimelainen. There's a racing superstar within the ranks. If W Series doesn't succeed, we would have let down a whole generation. The selection process is over. Now, the racing can begin. During three months of testing, 18 drivers from across the globe have seen off the competition to secure their places on the starting grid of this groundbreaking all-female championship. First stop, Germany. Hockenheim, a challenging track that's a regular on the F1 calendar. I'm really excited. I've been waiting for this for a long time, and I think that the rest of the grid <laughs> is waiting for this as well. Yeah, yeah. We're all quite good mates, but I'm not sure how that's going to go once they start crashing into each other. <laughs> the moment you put your helmet on and you're on track, you don't give a shit about who's in the other car. You just want to beat everyone. To ensure no unfair advantage, at each of the six W Series races, the drivers will switch between identical cars and get assigned a different race engineer. I need a break. My head hurts. I've had the same engineer for the past three years, so I've been used to working with one person. But it's actually quite cool now. I'm starting to get to know more of the guys in there. I'm looking forward to working with them all. And yeah, it's cool to be able to share the experience with so many different people. For the woman who dreamt up W Series, this is the result of three years planning. Catherine Bond-Muir's switch from financier to boss of a new race formula has been a leap into the unknown. The step between an idea and raising 10 million of pounds is absolutely enormous. I would be lying if I said that I knew exactly what it was going to be like feels like one of the biggest days of my life, you know, the run up into having my first child and that almost it's going to be a day and my life will change thereafter. So don't use these curves in no, the No, 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 don't use them. Okay. I mean, it's, it's up to you, you're on the one in the car. Two days before the race, the drivers get a chance to walk the track and air their concerns. The most terrifying thing is that pre-practice we're going to have completely on dry conditions yeah. and then Saturday when the race is happening will be completely wet, like mm. pouring rain. My hopes is that there won't be really big shunts or crashes and because with only six races in the season it's really important that you get good finishes every race. Every racetrack has its little key areas, corners where you can push and take a chance to find out where the car is and other corners where you just don't take a risk because the consequence of making a mistake, it's just too costly. Fortunately for the drivers, there's a chance to find this out during practice. Every single time we were on track, the conditions were different, so the pressure was on. We had dry stations, we had weight stations. On the fifth lap, I put it in the gravel, <laughs> so I didn't get enough track time going into qualifying. Sorry. Early troubles for some, but one driver seems unfazed by anything. I don't care about the weather. Whatever it is, I'm taking it as it comes. I don't mind rain at all. I actually like it a lot. Emma's probably the oldest driver on the grid. She's very calm, she's very measured, she knows how good she is, and she is very good. She's also unique amongst her rivals.
racing is definitely something I'm really passionate about. I, I love it, but it's not who I am. Like, it's not my whole identity. For me, it's, uh, it's plenty of things. It's being a mother, being a wife, being happy, being able to be happy no matter what I do. I'm an entrepreneur. That's basically what, what I am. I have my own company and I'm also a media personality doing radio for the biggest commercial channel in Finland. I was quite young when I started karting, younger than my daughter is now. I was three years old and she's six. I moved up to Formula Cars when I was 15. And I did Formula Ford for the championship there and then uh, Europe tracks and I became an Audi factory driver as well. Then my phone rang uh, one, one beautiful day, Scandinavian Touring Car Championships and we've been having an eye on you for a really long time. Do you want to come and drive? And I was like, yeah, for sure. And then I drove my first race when my daughter had her uh, first birthday. I wouldn't have applied to W Series if I think that I didn't have any chance to win it, so I'm in to win. Saturday, race day, and a soggy start for Emma and her rivals as they head off for qualifying. It's that rainy Saturday in Hockenheim, freezing and wet. What I was most concerned about was, you know, just the delivery of a good professional race. As in Formula One, pole position goes to whoever posts the fastest lap. Emma held back in practice, but now she's ready to give it her all. We actually had this strategy not to show our full potential in the trainings because of the data will be shared. So I was confident that I have more speed, but then in the qualifying, we did a little mistake in the setup, but fourth place, I was like, okay, I can start from here. Emma qualifies on the second row, three places behind one of her main title rivals. Jamie Chadwick has taken pole position here for the first W Series race. But it was no foregone conclusion for the British driver. Great job, Jamie, great job. Hockenheim, arguably the most nervous I've been going into a weekend. I secretly knew it was going to be a lot tougher, especially in qualifying. Come on, bro, we're on the old crew. Showing no sign of nerves despite a spin that damaged her car is Jamie's compatriot, Alice Powell, who starts sixth. Love being back out racing. It's been a long time since I've done a race in a Formula car and kind of any real racing, to be honest. So that was really good. The start of race one is now just moments away. It's going to be a great race. I mean, I'm delighted there's 18 cars lining up. That's the, that's the main thing. And everyone's safe. And hopefully that's the case in 30 minutes and one lap. The one thing I never anticipated was what it was like to see those 18 cars come round the corner and drive towards me. And that sound, the wall of noise. For such a long time, I didn't think it was going to happen. And then it did. Jamie Chadwick on pole position. Second, Fabian Volvens. Sarah Moore, third. Alongside her, Emmy Kimilainen. Fifth place at Marta Garcia. Knowing the process that's gone into putting these 18 talented racers on track is just absolutely fantastic. You can feel the anticipation. You can feel how tense it is. History right here. Lights out. It's a brilliant start from Jamie Chadwick. But it's disaster for Emma. It stalled in the start. Then I was thinking, OK, I can still push to overtake everyone to the podium. I have plenty of time. Jamie Chadwick into the first corner, leads this race. But then this unfortunate thing happened. Yeah, it came completely out of the blue for me. Behind Emma, one of the youngest drivers. I started 14th in the race. 18-year-old Canadian Megan Jilks. On the first lap, I messed up into corner six. She was coming way too fast. 
outbreaked myself. My immediate reaction was, oh no, oh no, oh no, stop, 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 stop. Oh, t bone down the inside. I piled into the side of Emma. I was in a kind of like in a shock. She had 110 kilometers per hour when she hit me. I knew it was completely my fault. That incident was all down to me, so I knew I was going to take a hard hit for that one. With only six races in the championship, that definitely is not the way they wanted to start here in Hockenheim. With Emma and Megan out, the race restarts under the yellow flag. Three Brits leading the way here. Marta Garcia is ever so close to the back of Sarah Moore there, coming into the heaven. And over Oh, and then she's done it more, has lost it. Marta Garcia, who's side by side with Baitska Visa. Marta is a very good driver. I think everyone knows she's, she's talented. Baitska, she's tough. Well, I like that. Nice little battle developing here amongst the drivers. From there on, Marta was quicker than me. I could not really keep up with her. Meanwhile, at the front of the pack... Jamie Chadwick under increasing pressure from Alice Powell. I started sixth for the race and managed to fight my way up to, to P2. Mm. Was pushing Jamie along. Mm. And then a couple of errors on my part and she broke away. The checkered flag is out and Jamie Chadwick wins the first W Series race. Great job, well done. Hockenheim, just perfect weekend, pole, and then, yeah, won the race. Oh, I had a bit of a downshift issue. Yeah, couldn't get that... down the gearbox for the whole race. And when I overtook Sarah, I was like, still not stop, stopping. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. Still braked early. I know, because the move is brilliant. And then I was like, stop, James. Stop, Jamie. <laughs> I was like, never stopping. Oh, God. Well That's done. Stressful. Well done. That really is honestly, that. Like, honestly. Is that the most stressful you've been? Yeah, it was. No, it's very stressful. I think it definitely set a marker. Uh, it's kind of what I wanted to do. To get a second out of that weekend I was actually really, really pleasing. Just to get back on the podium, you know, the, the champagne, it, it was really, really nice. And the race was my first podium. I just felt great because I didn't expect to do a podium after how the free practices went. We're trending on Twitter. I spent two years not knowing whether this would happen, and it's just happened, so it's wonderful. Really fantastic. Two weeks later, race two, Belgium, the undulating four-kilometer circuit of Zolder. I like these circuits where if you go off, you're going into the gravel. Zolder's a tricky circuit, you know, I was expecting all sorts of carnage. But before any carnage, everyone must be assigned a new car and engineer. You're going to take a ball out, that will be your chassis number for this race. Dan will tell you who your engineer is. Caitlin Wood. Changing engineers is, is actually really difficult. It sounds easy, but to eventually get a bond with someone and, and a friendship and then a work relationship and find out how they work and they sort of trust you and how you work to then just change it again for the next round is uh, quite difficult. And also it does obviously, you know, completely cut any criticism about having, you know, one engineer that's better than the other, like we all get to rotate. Yes. So I've got Antoine, who did Jamie last time. <laughs> so, you know, no pressure there. Um, he's, he's already told me he's expecting the same result. Whilst most drivers meet their new engineers, Megan's collision with Emma in race one means both keep their crews from Hockenheim. She's taken it really well, especially considering that it was the first race of the season, first lap incident. She's, um, she's, been, she's handled it extremely well. But for Emma, there are consequences. Starts hurting. I, I want you to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Straight away. Yeah. I'm taking absolutely no chances. Yeah. All right? Yeah. The slightest twinge, you straighten the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I no know. mucking about. I know. No, Emma. I know, I know. This is serious. This is. I know. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a little girl at home at the end of the day. Yeah, I know. I know. Didn't need you about. The hit did affect, to be honest, more than I thought in the beginning. The symptoms came a little bit later. The crucial point is that I should not get another hit right now when my concussion and the neck injury is activated. If I feel I'm 100% fine and I'm like, the reactions and the balance and everything is fine, everything is good, I'm definitely gonna race. 
Emma is kept under observation and there's another driver also under close scrutiny, but for different reasons. During the second selection, Belgium's Sarah Bovey didn't make the final 18, but impressed enough to be made a reserve driver. I have already shown in Melk and here that I have the speed. I have the qualities it takes to be a very strong racing driver. We took the decision to start moving things around, swapping reserves in, keep them fresh, give them the mileage they need to be competitive. So you had a birthday this week? Yes, I have a birthday present for you. Do you? Really? You're going to race tomorrow. Thank you, Woo! My father might have a hard attack with the world. She's knocking it out of the park on timing. It's also her local race. So she deserves it. Race day. There's a big crowd and a bold prediction from the boss. So I think in second race we'll have a completely new podium. And that's because Emma has got a point to prove because she was T-boned off the track. Vice Kavita knows Zolder really well, so this is one of her home tracks. She's super fast anyway. And Mickey Koyama, I mean, look how upset she was at the end of the last race, but she had made up 10 places. I think those three will be on the podium. 20 minutes to qualifying and Emma has a problem. Throwing up yesterday. Before I went to Zolder, I felt already a little bit better because of some treatments that I had. I went there to be able to drive and to have high expectations of the race. Are you going to be able to drive to the race? Hopefully. I was hoping that the adrenaline would fix the problem. <laughs> if I get any inkling in that car that you ain't right, I will pull you. Yeah. OK? It's not personal. It's for your own safety. The injury got worse. At that point, I could not take it anymore. It's only 20 minutes to qualification. Emma's been highlighted with some concussion issues, and the medical team are assessing whether she's going to be fit to drive. We obviously don't want to put someone in a car that's not physically fit, so between them and the, the, the medical team are going to decide whether she can race or not. If she can't race, we've got a reserve driver upstairs and we're going to tell her that she's got, got to get in the car at such short notice. You can't race me. No, you can't. He was saying to me the other night, you know, it's the life outside racing, but when it, that's at risk, that's when it's too far. Emma, Catherine and the team come to a decision. Of course, it was a disappointment, but uh, at the same time, I, I knew that health is more important and I need to be patient and, uh, and to wait. Yeah, now it should start, huh? Soon, at least. And you're in it, so get your kit on. What? You're, you're driving, mm. OK? So you've got to hurry, you've got to get your kit on. You need to get out there. Emma's loss is another reserve driver's gain as Hungarian teenager Vivian Kessley gets her chance. Obviously, I was really shocked when they just came up to me. I just ran down through everyone. No one understood why I'm so happy. Vivian, look at me. This is relax and drive. Yeah. We found out in Almeria that you could drive, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, so we're just going to breathe and we're going to do some laps. As Vivian takes final instruction, fellow reserve driver Sarah has more than just her own nerves to contend with. He's so stressed, you have to film him when I'm in the car. <laughs> He's like, you can read the stress on his face. No, it's, I've, I've, I've done a lot of racing myself. Uh, I am more stressed now than I was when I was racing. It's uh, because it's your child, a little child, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's something, but uh, she deserves it. Qualifying starts. Weitzka Visser crosses the line on a blistering lap of almost over a second faster than anyone else in the field. Living up to Catherine's prediction, Dutch driver Beitzka Visser looks to have secured pole. Beitzka Visser is in the pit lane. She believes her 128.7 is enough for pole position. <laughs> that is confidence, isn't it? But in the final minute... Chadwick has just set the fastest time of a 128.6. 
T1, T1, you can box us up, box us up. Yeah, you got that. Good job. Sorry I made that off myself, but good job. Massive gap, so I, I don't think that uh, it's possible for her to, to close the gap, but so what? It's less good news for the newcomers, with Vivian 17th and Sarah last. This isn't a disaster. A disaster would have been you crashing the car. Yeah. No, yeah, sure. No, yeah. As a racing driver, you just keep going forward, and I'm like, OK, I'm going to start last, but I went completely beast mode, and I really wanted to do a good race. Race two of six in the EW series, and this time we're in Zolder. Feeling good. Inside the top five again, I think it's going to be a very close race, so um, I'm just kind of going with my sensible head on and, you know, I don't want to do anything stupid. Just bring the car home, hopefully uh, another top five, maybe even a podium, so we'll see. Under wraps for now, the boss has exciting news about the driver on pole. So on Monday it's going to be announced she'll be with Williams Development Driver. Is it? Oh, uh, cool. Amazing. She's got the right head. Jamie is one step closer to realising her F1 dream, but with other priorities for now. Pole positions for Jamie Chadwick, who starts from the front, but she'll have to watch in her mirrors for Bytska Visser, who slots in behind her on the front row. But the immediate drama is at the back. I arrive on the grid and I see that my engine is on fire. Smoke pluming from there. It was devastating, but I was super disappointed with myself. Maybe A setback for Sarah. Unaware, Jamie and Beitzka all set for the start. Watch for the lights to go out. They're off and Beitzka Visser takes the lead of Jamie Chadwick. Jamie Chadwick caught napping there. I knew I had to make a good start. Immediately overtook Jamie there. And then from there I could manage the, the gap. The front of the pack pulls away leaving congestion further back. I was running, I think, seventh just after the start. And unfortunately, Esme was fighting, I think, against Fabienne. She was at the inside to the third to last corner. She missed the breaking point. Contact. Oh, and she spun around. I was, like, really angry. It really does bite you in the butt. You don't get a do-over, so it's kind of the be-all and end-all. A moment later, Vivian also comes unstuck. Obviously, I was quite disappointing, but um, things in racing can happen, and I was just looking forward for the next opportunity I would get. Six minutes left on the clock. It's Beitzka Visser, who's leading around Zolder. Jamie Chadwick in second. Alice Powell in third. Marta Garcia is fourth. With Beitzka comfortably in the lead, there's a fierce battle for second. Powell are going round the outside, looking to take second place. Not quite close enough. Seeing if she can get the undercut coming into oh, all the touch. I had that really good battle with Jamie. I just committed myself to, to making the move. She's got her. She took her on the uh, undercut, going on the inside of the circuit. Plays Jamie Chamwin coming back on the outside. Are they going to touch again? Oh, my goodness, that was close. It's arguably one of the best race battles I had. Jamie Chadwick's going to try around the outside of turn one, and they might touch. Oh, they can't touch. Jamie Chadwick goes wide. She'll get it, she'll get it into turn two. It looks like she will. Alice Powell's going to have to give that one up. And Jamie Chadwick has taken back second place. Mike Visa takes the win in Zolder. She said she wanted to beat Jamie Chadwick, and she's done it. Yeah, yeah, well done. Getting the win in Zolder was obviously very important for the championship. Pretty much perfect race. Um, had a perfect start from P2, barely any wheel spin, pull the gap, and just increase the gap step by step, so it was a perfect race for me. I was really pleased that Bikes could won because after the first race, the British press were implying that it may be a Jamie championship and that she was going to run away with it. Great to see that we're going to fight for the championship. It's not going to be a one-way street for, uh, for Jamie, that is absolutely clear. 
I think it was really important to have a rival. I think we both quite quickly worked out we hated losing to each other. She is yeah, someone that goes racing for the right reasons, and I respect that. Two countries, two races, two winners. W Series Season 1 is shaping up nicely. Next time, it's on to the Italian coast. Destination, Misano.